Unless y'all ain't done being ready. You know. I'm ready. I'm ready. He's got ready. two messages to preach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Music. I've got to preach twice. We better get going. <laughs> Everybody good? Yeah. I want to I want just continue on because I've been telling you, you know, there's, uh, you know, I've been telling you that 2015 is going to be our best year yet. I mean, it's going to be good. It's going to be answered prayers. It's going. We're going higher. I know the news and whatever else any other opinions might say, but I think for believers, people with some faith that know who they are, know what the grace revelation is, know how much Jesus loves them. We're going higher. We're going better. It's going to get better. And so the last few weeks, I've just been kind of, there's still some some mindsets or kind of some things that we still need tweaking on. So I'm kind of just dealing with some of that stuff, getting us more ready for 2015, all right? So I'm going to keep on keeping on with that. And so I just want to show you one more thing that's going to help us bring all that about, all right? Because here, here's what I know, all of us, we got more power than we think we have. I say you got more power than you think you have. You got more power than you ever been told. You have got more power than you ever known. You're more valuable than you know. You've got more stuff than you think you've got. All right. And so here's the thing about this new covenant, the things of God. You've got to believe that. You got to believe. He said, I've got all this stuff laid up for you. If you just want to believe in being saved, if that's as far as you want to take it, here's the way it's going to come. You're going to have to believe it to get it. That's, that's just the way God set it up. All the things of God, anything that you're going to get from God, now that you're a born again, new covenant believer, He said, I've got all this stuff for you, but in order for you to receive it, you're going to have to believe it. If you don't believe it, you ain't going to receive it. You've you got to believe. That's, that's our whole obligation for the new covenant is to believe. If you could believe, nothing's that Jesus said. For him who believes, nothing be impossible. Believe. So I, I'm just telling you, you've got more power than you think you have. And so when when we get some of the uh, some of the stuff off of the connections, the more power we got. So I'm just I'm just scrubbing some of the stuff off, and I might use a wire brush sometimes. So some of our religiousness that we still got is. Makes us squirm a little bit. You might growl at me some, but just hang on. Huh? It's for your own good, all right? You, you know, uh, uh, there's, there, I, you know, I get criticized all the time, but I don't care. I'm going whether nobody else goes or not. But, but it's so much power in what you believe. But you know, if you've been here very much, you know that I believe that it's the will of God for you to be blessed. I believe it's the will of God for you to have victory. I believe it's the will of God for you to prosper. It says it too many times. I believe that it's the will of God for you to be healed. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've got. I believe that it's the will of God for you to be totally healed. Live in victory. Now there'll be people that say, ah, you can't believe that. You can't tell people that. You can't be believing in all that. I say, yes, I can. I believe it. And so I live in it. Um, you're not trying to convince me. I've been healed myself so many times that I no longer even have to be healed. I live in health now. Amen. Well, I say, well, we don't believe that. I say, that's fine. You don't have to. You're sick and I'm not. <laughs> Fair enough? Yeah. All right. Because here, what does this say? I gave, some, I gave you guys some scriptures to look up for me so I don't have to uh, put them flip around a whole bunch. Who's got Proverbs 16.23? Proverbs 16.23. That You got that one? What does that say? What brand you got? NIV? Alright. What was it? Say it again. A wise man's heart guides his mouth and his lips promote instruction. Uh, mine, mine, yours might say, or some of them different ones, I look at different ones, says, uh, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. 
whether it's the truth or a lie, whatever, it's either side. You could say what I'm telling you is not the truth. Well, that's really irrelevant. Because even if it's a lie and you believe it, you'll still live in it. So whether I'm telling you the truth or not, you say, well, he's, he's lying, he's telling that ain't even, that ain't even, it doesn't matter. If you believe it, you'll live in it. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. So I get to think about, you know, you hear me tell this all the time, but I get to train horses for a living, you know. We work cutting horses and work cattle and all that. And, and a cutting horse, will, we have a herd of calves and we'll separate one calf out and that calf will try and frantic to get back to his partners, you know. And so you, you train your horse, you turn that horse loose, he'll do it all on his own. He'll match that cow move for move, keeping that thing from getting back into the herd, you know. And so I remember one time I was training this little colt and I was, I was pretty proud of him and he's doing good, you know. He's still young, but he's doing good. So we got a herd of cows. And you learn in cows, there's some cows that won't try very hard and there's other cows that play dirty and some cows really try hard. So you, some of them are fast, some of them are slow. And so there was this one white heifer in this herd, you know. My colt's doing good. I mean, he's confidence is getting high. I'm just proud of him. He's doing good. There's a lot of people watching out on show off with him, you know. So I said, there was this one white heifer in that herd, that white heifer, now she'd get it on. She she didn't play by the rules. She was fast. She'd throw her tail up, and she'd high yaw, you know. And so I, I'm about done with him. I said, where's that white cow? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut that white cow. Somebody over at the side, they said, he can't hold that white cow. I said, shh, shh. Don't you tell him that. I've placed something inside of him and he thinks he can hold that white cow. Don't you tell him any different. I believe he can hold the white cow. He believes he can hold the white cow. And there's a power working with inside of him that, that God gifted him to be able to do that. And you, you watch. When somebody believes in him and he believes in himself, we went in there and cut that white cow. And I mean, we broke her down and wiped her up. And they... <laughs> He's got more power than he thinks he does. You've got more power working within you than you think you do. I'm telling you, there's power in what you believe. There's power in what you believe. Jesus said, like, I, here, here's, cause here's what I'm going to tweak you for going in 2015. Because you've heard me tell this all the time. And I needed reminded of it myself all the time. And so do you. And some of you ain't heard it yet. Some of you have been here a long time and it still ain't sunk in yet. So I'm just going to keep on telling it, all right? Because you've got so much power, with power comes responsibility. With power comes responsibility. Thank God that he didn't turn all the power up until we started getting our minds right about some of this stuff. But I, I'm just going to, I'm going to share with you somewhat out of my experience tonight, but I'm going to, if I just shared with you my experience, you just probably wouldn't believe me. Some of you would, but some of you wouldn't. But I'm going to put so much Bible with my experience that, you, you know, you'd argue with me, but you can't argue with this Bible. Alright? Because somebody's got to start telling it. Somebody's got to start telling it. I, I remember there was a story in 2 Kings where Elisha was of prophet, the man of God, you know, and there, the the economy was so bad, the, there was a famine, and the people were so bad off, the economy was so, they were so distressed, it was worse than what CNN portrays. The, the economy was so bad, now listen, I'm just telling you what's in the story, I don't mean to be, uh, the economy was so bad, they were eating their own children. Second Kings, ten there. And Elisha, the man of God, he said this: Tomorrow there's going to be plenty, and it's going to be cheap. That's what he said. Now, now it don't look like that. Six o'clock news ain't saying that it's going to get better. Elisha says tomorrow about this time there's going to be plenty, and it's going to be cheap what he said. So somebody had, now did that make sense? One old boy there, the old kind of smart dude, he said, but you're, you're nuts. I'm giving you Jason's translation. You're crazy. That ain't going to happen. And he said, I tell you what, you're going to see it, but you'll not share in it. 
And so uh, he just said that. That's all he did. He said that. And then there's these three lepers outside of town. And three lepers said they got tired of their despair and sitting there doing nothing. And then three lepers, they said, you know what? If we sit here, we're going to die. If we go into town, we're going to die. If we go to the enemy's camp, we're going to die. Let's not just sit here. Let's do something. And they got up and they start listening. We're going to go to the enemy's camp. And so it says, as they went, they start three of them now, three old miserable lepers. Three of them started going to the enemy's camp. And, and as they went, God ca caused the enemy to hear them coming. And it sounded like armies of chariots and horses and all this coming. And, and the, they said, man, they've hired other armies to come against us. And they were scared and they high got out of there, booked it out of town and left, er, left their tents left their money, left their food, left everything they had. And here one and three lepers walked up and said, Man, jackpot, look at this, huh? And so, man, they're eating fried chicken and they're, they're just thinking all this. Great. And so they said, it's really not right for us just to keep all this for ourselves. Let's go back to town and tell, tell everybody. They're, they're back there boiling their babies and eating their own kids and all this. And we've got plenty. Let's go tell them what's happened. And so they go back into town and there, here they come. Everybody, they, I, and so the next day, so the next day now, there was plenty, and it was cheap. Why? Because somebody started to believe something. And so, I don't care what the news looks like. I'm, I'm going to tell you something right now that looks too, too, it looks too big to tackle. It, you think, well, that sounds all good, but I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't either, but I'm going to start saying it. Here's what I'm going to say. It's time we get our mouths cleaned up. 2015 can't handle your same old mouth. Because here, here's what I say. You know, I believe in total victory, and everybody that doesn't believe in total victory, they want to bring up Job. They say, well, it's not God's will for you to be blessed, you to be healed. No, look what God did to Job. Well, if you'll open your Bible and read it a little bit, you'll find out God didn't do it to him. The devil did it to him. Mm -hmm. But then I also seen something what Job said. Look, I want, I want to show you this, what Job said, because... This is what Job said to God. This is what he prayed. And this is what my prayer is for us tonight. And God's going to do it in 2015. Alright, you ready? If you don't want in on this, you better get out. This is what Job prayed. This is what we're praying. And, and you know we believe in grace. It's not by our power. God's going to do it for us. Alright? Here's what Job said. Because listen, all that Job went through, everybody's heard about all oh, poor old Job. Well, God allowed Job to go through it. He's going to allow me to go through it. Who is with that? The devil put that stuff on Job. And here's why. Job said this. Job 6, verse 24. Teach me, O Lord, and I will hold my tongue and cause me to understand where I have erred. Teach me, Lord, and I'll hold my tongue. Show me where I have erred. Who let the devil get on him? Oh, we've always said God did. Do you know what God's limited to? What you believe. Because what you believe comes out of your mouth. Alright? Now listen, I'm not going to put this on you as a work. But you've got to go train yourself to start talking right. You're just going to have to hear this and believe in it and let God do it in you. Alright? Because that's what I did. I read Mark 16 one time. It says this. Those that, this is Jesus talking. Jesus said, those that believe in my name. Those that believe in my name. This is what it said. This is what a believer is going to look like right here. Alright? I know we've said, well, they go to certain churches and they do this and on certain days and this and that. And that's what believers do. Mm. Sorry. I'd get kicked out of 90% of churches if I took, stood up on Sunday morning and said, this is what Jesus said a believer looks like. He said, they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. Huh? Deadly snake bite them, won't, won't kill them. They drink poison, won't kill them. And they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. That's what Jesus said a believer looks like. Well, that one part in there said, those that believe in my name will speak with new tongues. Speak with new tongues. Now you say that means praying in tongues, speaking in tongues, all that. I'm not saying that it don't. It's part of it. But I also think those that believe in my name have got to start talking different. Because those that believe in my name have got a new, a new position. 
See, when you got born again, you got the gift of righteousness. You hear me tell you that all the time. You've got the gift of righteousness. You're now sons and daughters of God with no sin on your record. You, you are walking in a different position. You're now in a position of power. You have a position. The faith of God is inside of you. And you're made in the likeness and the image of God. And if God ever did anything, He did it by speaking. And He's your daddy. Now, if you're going to do anything, how do you think you're going to get it done? So those that believe in my name are going to talk different. Because now I've got power, I can't be saying the things that I used to say. So I just pray this, Lord. If I, I believe in your name, it's me. I pray this. I said, Lord, I don't want anything to come out of my mouth that's contrary to your word. That means I can no longer say that I'm sick. I can no longer say that I'm a sinner. I can no longer say that I'm defeated or that I'm not blessed or this or that. Or not. I can't be saying that stuff. Why? Because there's power inside of me and, and the power produces whatever it is I say. Let me, let me give you some before you start squirming on me. Uh, li listen to this. Jesus, I want to read you this in the message Bible. Matthew 12, 36. All right, listen. This, this is the phone. I mean, this is the Bible on my phone. All right? I don't want to read you the message Bible. Matthew 12, 36. Jesus talking again. He's getting on them. Getting on them religious folks, you know. He said this, Let me tell you something. Every one of these careless words is going to come back to haunt you. There will be a time of reckoning. Words are powerful. Take them seriously. Words can be your salvation. Words can also be your damnation. We have failed to realize how much power there is in what we say. Because we have failed to realize how much power that we have. That He's placed in us. Alright? Somebody read me something. Who, I give some more things. Here. Who's got Proverbs 15, 14? Mr. Richard. Proverbs 15, 14. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge. But the mouth of fools feed on foolishness. Say it one more time. The heart of him who understands seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feed on foolishness. Alright, alright. I said something different. I don't know. Let's get another. And what about Proverbs 18.21? Who's got that one? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of what? God, right? I mean, death and life are in the power of God, right? No, it said the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's what the Bible says. Who's got a tongue? Uh-oh. Oh, what about another? 21, 23. Who's got that one? Who shall keep his mouth and his tongue keep his soul from trouble? Whoever, whoever keeps his mouth keeps his soul from trouble. Whoever keeps his mouth keeps his soul from trouble. Did you hear that? That's in the Bible. Alright? One, one more. 23 7. Who's got that one? For he is the kind of man who is always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, his heart is not with you. That ain't the right one either. I wrote the wrong thing down. 20, Proverbs 23 7. That's that one? Alright. Well, you got it. There's enough, there's a, there's a hundred more of them, alright, that says that there's power in your mouth. Death and life in the power of your tongue. Man who keeps his mouth. Job said, Lord, teach me, and I'll hold my tongue to show me where I have erred. I'm going to tell you why we haven't lived in the full power of God and the full victory of God is right here. Let me, let me give you a little bit more, alright? Look at James 3. This is the New Testament now, alright? James 3. Them people writing that stuff about how much power they had, they weren't even born again. Imagine how much power you now when you got born again. I think being born again, you know, now we're running chainsaw. You used to have a handsaw. Now we got a chainsaw. Listen to this. 
James 3, I'll start at verse 10. It says this, From the same mouth came both blessing and cursing. Verse 3. Now, if we put the bits into horses' mouths so that they will obey us, we direct their entire body as well. And we put a bit, a little old bit, in a great big horse's mouth, and we guide their whole body. You know what I'm saying? That they will obey us, we direct their entire body as well. Look at the ships also. That they are so great and are driven by strong winds, are still directed by a very small rudder, wherever the inclination the pilot desires. So also, the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts of great things. See how great a force is set aflame by such a small fire? And the tongue is a fire, the very world of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life. It sets on forth the course of our life and is set on fire by hell. For every species of beasts and birds and reptiles and creatures of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by the human race, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil and full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be this way. But it said, no one can tame it, but I can tell you somebody can tame it. Man can't tame it. It's up to us and our religiousness and training and all that. We, we just be religious and we say, all oh, this, you know, but when we pray the same prayer that Joe prayed, God will do it. And God's going to do it for us in 2015. Because here, here's what it's, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you got power. When you realize you got power, you're going to have to change the way you talk. I know some of you ain't getting it. Some of you ain't been getting it, but you're going to get it now. It's 2015. I've done decided. I'm going to put it to the level where you're either going to get it or you're going to get mad at me. Because some of you have been listening to this for four or five years now. And I, when I see you on the street, I say, how, how you doing? How you? Oh, I'm sick. <laughs> I've been telling you for four years now, I quit saying that. That's right. You do not realize that you're the prophet of your own life. Now listen, I'm not telling you this as a work. Well, you say, well, but I am sick. Well, if you want to look at the circumstances, okay. If you want to look at the facts, okay. But what does the Word of God say about you? You're healed. Oh, 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 so there's a choice. You can speak death or you can speak life. And whichever you choose to believe is what you will live in. Living proof. Living proof. I got lots of living proof around here. You don't have to go on being sick. You don't have to go on being defeated. I'm telling you, you got more power than you think you have. You've been redeemed. You hear me? You've been redeemed. Let me tell you something. I, I'm, I'm over all this religious mess and, and just going on and being religious and be saved. Oh, thank God I'm saved. I'm going to go to heaven one day and I'm just going to suffer along with you. I'm done with that mess. You know what saved means? Been redeemed. We're in a different position now. Life with God. No longer separated. Life with God should look different than life without God. And, and I, I'm just going to keep on telling this till somebody gets hungry enough to say, I'm tired like them lepers. I'm tired of sitting here in this same old situation, living in death with no future, no hope. Oh, I just, well, church full of lepers. Oh, it's just going to die or someone there like you. I'm going to get up and try something. Amen. Find out what you hear me tell you all the time. You've received the gift of righteousness. 
You've been born again, you receive the gift of righteousness. It has nothing to do with your performance. Now when you open this Bible up and you see promise everywhere in here for those that are righteous, that's you. You're qualified for it. And so then you're going to start, you're going to keep on hearing this, you're going to keep on hearing this, you're going to keep on reading it. Don't just rely on me. You're only getting one dose a week if you rely on me. You, you got this, you got one of these. It's the best selling book ever written of all time. You got it on your phones, on your iPads, everywhere. There's a I mean, we got more Bible than we've ever had access to before. Everything in here is life for you. And you can start reading this and you're qualified. Jesus qualified for you every promise that's in this book. You, you can get in. You can think on it. You can read. It's medicine. You know, I got to notice in Jesus, you know, when Jesus got baptized, was led up into the wilderness and tempted of the devil. The devil was coming at him. I mean, he was coming at him. You see, he got put under pressure. When you get put under pressure, that's when you'll find out what you believe. It's like a ketchup bottle. You squeeze that thing, ketchup comes out, right? You know what? When you squeeze most Christians, put them under pressure, you know what comes out? Doubt and unbelief and lies. Ouch. But if you start putting this in and getting the truth, and you start, listen to me, and I'm telling you, when you get under pressure, you look what happened to Jesus. Look, pressure came, you know what he said? It is written. Pressure came, it is written. Pressure came, it is written. I learned. I'm learning. I said, I said, see, four or five years ago now, I prayed what Joe prayed, said, Lord, teach me. Teach me, and I'll hold my tongue. Show me where I've erred. He started cleaning my mouth up. He, very, he really cleaned my heart up because out of the abundance of the heart is what the mouth is saying. So whatever it is you believe, there's a direct correlation to what you're living in and experiencing to what it is you believe and what you believe is coming out of your mouth. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. Why? Because the tongue is wagging out there everything it is that you believe. You start believing that God's good and that He loves you and He's qualified you for every promise in this book and you start saying that, you start telling that, see, Elisha just said it. He just said it and there was a power outside of him that went to work on something. There is a power inside of you that is going to work on something. He's just waiting on you to believe Him and start saying it. Does it have to make sense? No. Does it have to look like it? No. I don't care what the news says. For Jason and his family, 2015 is going to be the best year yet. I'm going to have more money than I've ever had. I'm going to have more health than I've ever had. Hey, I'm going to lay hands on more sick people than I ever have. I'm going to see people healed. I'm going to see life. Why? Because I choose to believe so. Mm-hmm. I get up every morning. What does this Bible say? You all, if you all know me, you know I ain't just preaching this on Thursday night. I'm living in it. I get in the mirror every day. I can walk up and down my drive. Something trying to get on me. I'm telling you, when, when I get under pressure now, I'm going to tell you what. If, if you don't want something on you, you better not be around. Because when I get under pressure, I'm going to tell you what's going to come out. It's the Word of God. I know who I am. I know what I've got. I know who's gave it to me, and it can't be taken from me. At, no weapon formed against Jason can prosper because the Word of God said, Jesus loves me, this I know. Why? Because the Bible tells me so. Amen. It ain't based on my feelings. It ain't based on my circumstances. It ain't based on what religion said or anybody else said. It's based on what God said. And when what God says about you becomes the final say, and you stand on that and fill with any other opinions, there's only one voice for me. I'm not even going after another voice anymore. There's only one voice for me. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, and it'll start coming out your mouth. <laughs> I'm telling you, quit talking that mess. That's right. I don't know how much plainer I can put it, and I'm trying to be polite about it. Quit saying you're sick. Amen. Quit saying you're broke. Quit saying your kids are crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, death and life are in the power of your tongue. You know what? This is what drives me crazy. I'm gonna y'all better go sing because I'll have to get in trouble on this one. I'm telling you, we're going in 2015. I'm, I'm stripping this junk off of us, alright? Listen, I'm gonna tell you what I, I, I don't like I hear this all the time because because I get, you know, I, I'm just I, I you know Jesus was controversial, right? I've I've decided that if you're not a little bit controversial, you're really not preaching the gospel. But I'm controversial. 
Because I've decided to believe God. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we've believed in, a whole bunch of traditions we've got that people will fight you over that are not even in the Bible. Amen. Amen. And so I, I seen this this here, this is one gets people. They won't say, uh, I know people that that uh, I'm not saying you're not ever gonna go through a battle. I'm not saying that you ain't gonna be attacked with something, but you know, let's just use them lepers for example. You know, here's somebody today come up to me and say, Oh, I've got leprosy. Just like that cold. Shh, shh, shh. But you know what we do? Oh, we call everybody. Put me on a prayer list. <laughs> Put me on a prayer list. And, and you know what? There's okay. Just so, so and so church don't happen here because we ain't got a prayer list. We got faith. That's right. That's right. Sorry if you ain't ready for that. But you said, "Put me on a prayer list." You know what happens with a prayer list? Well, they'll say, well, this one, okay, anybody got any prayer requests tonight? Oh, I do. Now, now, now I'm not being critical, all right, or if I am, I am. I don't know what I am, just telling the truth, so take it however you want to. Anybody got any prayer requests? Oh, so-and-so's got leprosy. Put them on a prayer list. Oh, bless their heart. Okay, we'll put so-and-so on a prayer list they got leprosy. You know what happens? We might pray that, that day. You know, we might pray that to together. All right, we're going to pray for so-and-so. Bless their heart. They've got leprosy. But you know what happens then? Say that's Sunday night. We really get more personal with the prayer request on Sunday night than we do on Sunday morning. You know, smaller crowd. And so what happens? We might pray a little there for them. But you know what happens on Monday morning? Hey, did you hear about so-and-so? Now remember, you know what? We failed to realize how much power we've got. Oh, we might have prayed a little prayer, but we didn't really believe in, in, in healing anyway. But now Monday morning we go to work. Guess what? Did you hear about so-and-so? They've got leprosy. Hey, that and then two people. There's 300 people goes to this church. 300 people on Monday morning. Hey, did you hear about so-and-so? They got leprosy. Did you hear about so-and-so? They got leprosy. Do you hear what is you're saying? And what 300 now people, now 900, now 1,500 people, now 2,000 people, now the whole town says so-and-so's got leprosy. Nobody on a prayer list gets healed. You know why? Because the whole town is proclaiming that they have leprosy. I'm going to tell you, anything ever gets on me, there ain't a soul known except a few people that I know knows how to pray. Because I don't want people that don't know how much power they have speaking death over me. You got something on you, you better hush. That's right. You know I'm telling them right. They say, I can't believe you don't believe in prayer lists. They say, how many people got healed on your prayer list anyway? I know I'm a little riled up about it, but uh, I'm sorry. If it hurts your feelings, don't get hurt. Just be hungry. Recognize the truth when you see it. It ain't working. You know why? Because people do not realize how much power they have, and they're proclaiming death instead of life. What if the whole town and 2,000 people with some faith said, I know that the, that, the, that the facts might say they have leprosy, and the doctor might have said they have leprosy, but what if the whole town said the Word of God says that they're healed? Amen. Amen. Oh, well, no, we don't believe that. I, I'm gonna, here's, what, here's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be like Elisha. And I'm telling you, all of Southern Illinois, every believer in Southern Illinois is going to learn how to get their mouth right. And we're going to start talking right. And we're going to start having faith. And we're going to start saying life instead of death. Huh? You say, well, how's that going to happen? I don't know. It sounds too big to me, too. He, gave you, he said, the same spirit that rose Jesus up out of the grave dwells inside of you. I remember when Kirk was here, he said this to me. It, it, it affected me. And it, is it a verse in the chapter that I pointed out to you? No, but, but this Bible backs it up on every single page. He said that, that God shared with him and told him that. He said this, that, that my word coming out of your mouth is just as powerful as my word coming out of my mouth. Now here's what we're going to do. Because now you go, now, now, now don't just go home and all depressed and say, oh gosh, my, all my troubles is because I've been talking like I have. How in the world am I ever going to retrain myself? Start, okay, I hear you, Jason. I agree with that. I believe it. You, you gave me enough Bible that I believe that. But how in the world am I going to change that? I, I've been talking like this for 60 years. How in the world am I going to change that? We ain't. 
and goes, I can train you for 10 years and have all kinds of religious training and you just be religious and, 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 and flaky and fluky and cooey. Ain't messing with that. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to let God do it. He did it for me and I'm still going. I'm telling you that I'm all the way there yet. But I asked Him to. And He said, whatever you ask me to do, I'll do. Because guess what? He wants it done more than you do. Alright? So here, here's the, this. We're going to pray. What you'll pray? Eric, ready? Everybody? You're going to pray this because you mean it. Let's, let's pray this. Let's everybody pray this. Alright? Say this. Father, Father thank, you thank you for redeeming me. Thank you for giving me power. Thank you for giving me power. And I read in your word. I read in your word. That it says that everything in my mouth. Says everything in my mouth. Has power. Has power. And so I ask you. I ask you. From this night on. This night on. To fix my mouth. To fix my mouth. That nothing. That comes out of my mouth. Out of my mouth. That's contrary. That's contrary. To the word of God. You have to do it, God. You have to do it, God. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And don't don't quit me. Say, devil. Devil. You're through operating. You're through operating. In my life. In my life. Because I found the key. I found the key. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.